Check this out guys, I'm at the Phoenix Art Museum here and they have a lowrider exhibit and uh, they have a bunch of the Auto World lowriders uh, some of these newer releases, I think I have this one but I guess this will be my first chase right, I think this is one of those red I don't even know what they're called, I don't really collect Auto World so much but uh, it's 20 bucks so if it wasn't a chase that would probably not be a good deal all of them are 20 bucks but maybe this is a good deal. I'll take a chance. Whatever. Anyways, I'll see you later. Alright guys, here I am. I relocated. And this is, uh... I'm now in Massachusetts. I was visiting my brother in Phoenix. So all those videos are got, are done with. And uh, now I'm in Massachusetts. But sadly, there's not too much car-related stuff here. Because cars rust in New England. Uh, they salt the roads in certain places. Anyways, my first Ultra Red, as it's called apparently, I forgot what they were called at the art store there. And by the way, I'm going to leave a link to that uh, art video, the Phoenix Art Museum. It's a decent museum, and the first exhibit in there was themed around lowriders, so they had some really interesting fine art there. Interesting is key, you know, you may like it, you might not, it's fine art after all. I actually have this model here in the the standard color from I think the first release of the an earlier release of these Auto Worlds. I was debating if I should open this. I know if I hold on to this in a year or two, it'll be worth a hundred or two hundred bucks. But it is a cool car, and because it's a red car with red wheels, red tires, for me it looks like a low rider, a custom low rider, even though it has red tires. So we're gonna go ahead and open this guy. And I don't really buy this stuff for investment reasons, knowing that die-cast cars are going to get paint rash. So I'm just going to enjoy it, right? I buy things to enjoy. And I've mentioned this many a times. There are smarter things to invest in than die-cast to cars or toys in general. So I guess it's just the standard packaging, and I guess that's the green one I have. Unfortunately, that's located somewhere else. So this is the first 164 scale car I have in America. So sadly, I'm not going to be able to compare to anything. It's just going to be its own independent video. And sadly, this monitor that my father purchased is extremely glossy. So there's this atrocious reflection. I'm actually wearing a black shirt because it's so reflective. But it's the only HDMI monitor laying around that I can use. So if you want to look at photos like this online, that's what we're going to have to deal with today. So I don't think this graphically is matching these, these two lowriders here. Because I think maybe the that maybe this is a real lowrider somewhere in the real world. But this being the ultra light variant is still a cool looking cool looking thing. I forget if these things actually fit in these boxes. Yeah, it does with some room to spare. Duh. I'm an idiot. I need to know if the blister fits in there. And it does. That's good. Very nice. So I'm going to hold on to this and lose all the other stuff. All right, so I had to find a dental pick. This is one of those. I forget. I don't know what brand this is. I just found it. It's interesting. You know, it's got a rubbery tip. So be a little gentler on the picking on the vehicle. All right, so physically it's the same as the uh, green one I reviewed, just the color is different. But I'm liking the, in this case, the red tires match well with the red paint. They are rubbery, and you'll notice the actual white walls stripe is, it's not perfect. This front wheel is not perfectly concentric, but the rear is very good. I would say that's close to perfect, the rear one. This side, not bad. It's not perfect on the front. The rear seems better. Anyways, it's a lot better than what green light does. Frankly, I don't really see a need to have white walls in most cases, but I will say in those photographs there online, both of them are running white walls. So I guess that's why they did it. All right, so another nice thing is this dark red does hide this panel gap nicely, a little better than usual. Although I can still tell that this side gap here is pretty tight. This side is very open. The 
back has to be open so it can clear that uh, windshield. And the engine, well, you know, I'm not a big fan of these things. I feel that it's pretty lame looking. I would just rather have a closed single piece body myself. Okay, white painted headlights. It's a little bit of a badge there. I wonder if you can read it. Let's see. No, but there's like a little red there. I don't know if that's just an red from the painting process or if it's supposed to be there. The license plate has molded details like a recess, but there's no paint there. The headlights are, I mean, the uh, turn signals are nice and orange. And I think there's a little black wash in this grill, so the black is nice. And then graphically on the side, just like that green one I believe I reviewed, very nice graphics, you know, look how tight these thin lines are. That is not so good though. But uh, the rest of it looks pretty nice. The door handle sticks out, silver. Silver trim on the casting, also on that little plastic window there. Nicely painted taillights. And then that badge, you can actually read Chevrolet, so that's cool. I don't know what it says below, maybe Impala. Can't really see it myself. Okay, window, rear window here has got silver on it. Some bumps molded on that interior piece. I guess that's ribbing for the back bench seat there. In that car that sold, yeah, there's no headrest. So, and then the steering wheel looks pretty good. And then the dash, not bad. Metal base, I guess, the whole red base thing. Hmm. All right, well, I mean, it's not bad at all. I guess if I was really nitpicky, maybe this badge on this side could have been printed better. Or is it supposed to be that way? I don't know if that's supposed to look that way or not. Seems to be the case on both sides. Oh, it's red there. So the red is hidden by the red body color. So it is printed properly. It's just that seeing how it's red on red, it kind of makes it look strange. Hmm, I think. Anyways, the gold Dayton-esque wheels are not bad. They kind of match with the little gold pinstriping there, so that's pretty well coordinated, I think. Okay, well, I'm pretty happy. This is the cool, cool introduction to the Ultra Reds. So... I did manage to bring one of these with me on the actual airplane. No fancy coasters though. So it's kind of like my videos are just starting fresh again, at least for the next two months. And this is the first 164 in my collection. But I'll be heading back in uh, October. And so those videos will zoom back to normal in my standard photo booth and with the rest of my collection to compare to. I do want to give a heads up on some other videos that I have coming down a pipeline. I've got two very rare half-scale lightsabers. I've got uh, a 1-200 scale B-58 Hustler. That's a bomber plane from the Cold War era, I believe. And I've got uh, two Mesco Spider-Man action figures. Uh, some other uh, Star Wars Black, I don't know. And then put in a big order for um, some 164 scale cars because I've been to several Walmarts and a Target and Hobby Lobby and there's almost nothing good to buy like everything is sold out so I've had to resort to eBay to buying the models I want which is really sad you know because it means I'm overpaying uh, and as you saw I definitely overpaid for this but I'm okay with this because it's a rarer one so that's what's happening these days uh, yeah, just hang with me the next few months. Uh, but also another warning, there simply aren't that many 164 scale models I want anymore. I do have some uh, models already waiting for me in Asia, like a resin Mercedes 300 SL. That one's going to be cool. But uh, we got to wait till October. So, yeah, I guess I'll see you when I see you. Just not going to, there are not going to be too many videos. I still have a whole bunch of Choroku videos that I shot in Asia. So those will continue into the feed, but uh, things that look realistic, more like this, there's just not going to be so many of them. Sorry, guys. 
I'm only gonna buy what I want and I try to avoid duplicates even though this is one right here I'm always breaking my own rules you know all right that's a long-winded uh, video but uh, it explains why my background is so lame this monitor is so glossy I might have to put up a black board or something in front of me so you don't see my but this reflection is, is horrendous but I think it's, it's helpful when you're comparing to photos, right? Yeah, I'm gonna keep the monitor. I, I really like comparing to the photos. I wanna know if the models look realistic or not. All right, thanks for watching. See you in the next uh, Auto World video.